So, the Bakugan reboot format does not have an official sideboard mechanic. But I'm going to show you the one that I've made. So, as usual, you have a deck consisting of three character cards, you know, and your three corresponding Bakugan, as you can see, and deck of 40 ability cards, and then you have your six Bakukors. Now, in most card games, such as Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic the Gathering, you have a 60-card deck, and the sideboard format for both of those games adds a sideboard of 15. If you don't know what a sideboard is, every time you go into a round for a tournament or something, you would play best out of three matches. And in your first match, you have to have your deck reverted to its default setup. But in between matches, you could say, okay, well, I want to take out these cards and replace them with two other cards from the side. Say, uh, you know, I want to put in these two cards instead. And this allows you more versatility and the ability to, you know, kind of respond to different opponents. In the Armored Elite line, there's actually a few new ability cards that say if all of your opponent's Bakugan are the same faction. But this isn't super useful of a mechanic to have in, you know, your default deck loadout because you never know when your opponent's going to be using Bakugan all of the same faction. But that's a great card to have in a sideboard, because then if your opponent is playing a mono faction deck, you can respond accordingly. Um, this is also very handy for certain flip cards, such as ones that block attacks based on what Bakugan is the Bakugan's holding. So for instance, I have Confuse in here, and while Fire Fist and Magic Shield cores have been really popular in the meta as of late, they may not uh, coming up, or maybe facing someone who's using a very, like, Orange Shield and Green Fist heavy deck, or a Helix core deck. And thus, Confuse may not be as helpful there. So, basically, because the sideboard format in the, those other games is 15 cards compared to a 60 card deck, that's a quarter of the deck's size. So I've gone with a sideboard format of 10 cards for ability cards. You notice, you know, Hyperlupithion Ultra here. Well, this is Chaos Pandox Ultra, so why do I have that there? You can't exactly divide a team of three into forts, but I decided that a fourth Bakugan would actually make a lot of sense. Now, as you can see, first off, Lupithion Ultra here in Chaos comes with Green Fist and Orange Shield. And even though I'm already running four Shield Cores in this deck, uh, with Mantanoid and Pandox, I cannot just put two Green Fist cores in here so that I could, you know, swap out just Tertonium and take out, you know, I'll get to the next part of that, uh, taking out the Ventus cards, but swap out Tertonium, keep my Shield cores in there, um, or rather, I guess I could more so swap out Pandox, you know, and decide, okay, well, I want to swap my Shield core with one of two Green Fists. Well, no, I can't do that. You have to have it where the fourth Bakugan you bring in, you have to bring in their exact paired Baku cores. This is just to ensure balance and also to ensure that uh, you will always be able to build a legal deck. The other thing is that ultimately the cards that you bring in for your 10, they just have to make a legal deck. So in this deck, I run one Ventus Evo, with Diamond Tertonium, I run two Baku Mortars, so that's three Ventus cards. Uh, let's see, I got two copies of Nature's Power in here, that's five. Two copies of Ventus Mirage in here, that's seven. And then two copies of Optic Beam, that's nine. Those are the only Ventus cards I'm running in here. Um, however, I'm running more than ten Aquas ability cards in here. So I cannot swap Mantanoid out of this deck. But... I could swap out Pandox in favor of Lupithion. I could even keep one of the shield cores that Pandox has and just swap out the other shield core for Lupithion's fist core. I can absolutely do that. The deck just has to stay legal. So, in that same sense, I could keep Pandox in here as well and decide, okay, these Helix cores are not helping me a bunch, or my Ventus cards are just not very helpful here. So I could decide, alright, I'm going to take out Tertonium and all nine Ventus cards put in Lupithion, and then take nine cards from here to replace the Ventus cards with, and I still have the ability to swap out one more card with my tenth card. So, you know, I've got two Hyper Lupithion, I've got a place of Blinding Ink, 
a couple of sinkholes. You know, I've got my negates in here just to have some counter options. And I've got a couple of copies of Drum Wave and a Pegatrix Drill. Um, essentially, the way that this sideboard format works means that you could even have a Bakugan of a fourth faction on the side. I could have Auralis Lupithion Ultra on my sideboard instead. And I could choose to have my sideboard consist of up to 10 Aquas, Chaos, and Auralis cards to swap out with the Ventus cards from Teutonium. I can absolutely do that. This means that if you have a deck that functions in a way, uh, you know, say I was running Aquas, Chaos, and Pyrus in here with a bit of a core control deck, and I wanted the ability to swap out one of my Bakugan, uh, say probably my Aquas with a Ventus. So that I can have a bit more of a focus on energy heavy. So I'm going for domination and then power ritual to get energy boosting, stuff like that. But I'm also running this, you know, very domination heavy. So if I want to have more core control, I would swap in Aquas instead of Ventus. You can do that with this format. And that means you can have a deck that can effectively be two different things. But you do have to keep it legal. So if I take out Ventus Tertonium... I no longer have any Ventus Bakugan in my deck at all. That means all Ventus cards have to go. But other than that, that's how it works. And it's honestly pretty simple. Other than that, it's just a matter of, you know, you gotta keep in mind playsets. You can have additional copies of cards that you don't have a playset of in your deck. Just make sure that between the deck and the place or the deck and the sideboard, that you have no more than a playset of any given card. As long as you do that, you're fine. Um... I personally keep to a rule, though I have very few duplicate Bakugan, that duplicate Bakugan are not allowed in a deck. I honestly, the only advantage I would see to that is, say, running three Pyrus Core Dragonoids in a deck, because honestly they're real easy to get, they're everywhere, and being able to have the options of their Hyper, Diamond, and Titan Evo um, all there, and being able to just evolve whichever one is about to go into battle, even being able to have all three different Evos on the field at a time. Uh, which could be really cool, but ultimately, I don't really allow that. So, this format focuses specifically on just being able to add options to respond to your opponent. I don't know if this is going to get popular enough as a video with just how kind of on the... You know, off the dome this is. I honestly have been wanting to make a video about this for a while, and I just kind of haven't. Um... But honestly, I hope that this video gets enough traction that at least people see this and start spreading the details of the format itself, not even necessarily the video, just the sideboard itself throughout the community. Because I hope this becomes a thing that we are allowed to do in tournaments. I hope to see local tournaments honestly you know, start using it because I think it would add so much fun with the game, especially with the dual faction cards and with Fusion Force, what's coming up with that. There could be so much potential fun with that. You know, I've in here I've got where I've already got consort in the deck, but I've got a couple of drum waves to get a bit of uh, frost strike in there. I've got Pegatrix drill so I can get some card draw, and if I mix that in with drum wave, then I can be getting some extra damage boosting and a little bit of frost strike as well. Or if my opponent's just getting a lot of like actions out, even a couple of heroes, then I'm like, okay, these are really bad news for me. I could put in Blinding Ink or Sinkhole, and Lupithion Ultra uh, gives me some alternate options for core control on the field. By the way, this deck is what I call Marionette, and uh, if that sounds familiar to you, well, let's just say I always wanted a Mantrix. So, yeah, I, uh, I think that's pretty much it. I can't think of anything else. It's basically just that. Any given Bakugan, sideboard of 10 ability cards, two Baku cores, they have to be paired to the sideboard ba Bakugan. I cannot stress that enough. Um, they do have to specifically be that way so that it's as if you're constructing... Basically, construct your sideboard as if the Bakugan and cards and Baku cores you have in it are actively part of the deck when you're constructing it. Um, that's the best way I could put it, is if... Having all four of these Bakugan, all 50 of these ability cards, all eight of these Baku cores, if having all of those would not make a legal deck, assuming those number restrictions were removed, then it is not a legal sideboard. 
So, if, again, if I put in two green fists and decide to swap out uh, Pandox and swap out one of his shields for either green fist, that's still not legal because I only have one green fist permitted to me. So, that's the one thing you really got to keep in mind there. But other than that, it's pretty much uh, about as versatile as you could want it to be. And again, having that ability to put in a fourth faction or being able to, say, take a mono faction deck and swap out one of your Bakugan with an Auralis Bakugan. Maybe one that can fuse once we get Fusion Force. Uh, being able to get off that Auralis power in, say, a Mono Ventus deck. And being able to get stuff like Gaia Force online. Um, there's endless amounts of potential. And I'm hoping it will add a lot more use to certain ability cards. If your opponent's playing a very flip card heavy deck, suddenly you can take better advantage of cards like, I think it's Kurin? No, um, it's uh, Bill Kuzo, of whenever your opponent plays a flip card, you can uh, draw a card. Um, things like that. Um, things like Atmosphere, it's like plus 12 damage for 8 energy, and if your opponent plays a flip card this turn, then you get uh, 3 card draw. Um, really good rare, actually. Uh, awesome rare, even. Um, cards like that can be good, but they're a lot more situational. If your opponent's running a very aggression-heavy deck, and they're not running many flip cards, then you don't want to run something that's relying on triggering effects based on their flip cards. So, that's the real thing that makes this so useful, is adding use... Like, adding the ability to make certain cards actually useful when they're normally too situational to be useful. Um, and hopefully they'll, honestly, hopefully they'll see more cards getting into the meta, because we'll see people frequently putting certain Bakugan or ability cards in their sideboard, and people trying to build their decks and their sideboards around that. Um, just keep in mind the other thing, if you're in a tournament, when you get to your new round, you have to revert your deck back. I recommend, because it's the smaller amount of stuff, write down or take a picture of what's in your sideboard specifically, so that you remember what you have to take back out, because you have to revert your deck back to its default state um, when you go to face a new opponent. That is the one thing you need to keep in mind if you're going to introduce this at your tournament format. Um, honestly, if it's any kind of card shop or anything that's ever run uh, any other tournaments before, especially Magic, then they'll already know exactly how to work that particular mechanic, and you shouldn't have any issues. Um, but, yeah. And that. I, uh, I hope this format kind of kicks off. I do want to make some videos of um, other custom rule formats that I've made up. I've still got to do a bit of playtesting with them, though, so I'll have to hold off on that. But in the meantime, you know, I think this will be a pretty effective enough demonstration of that. Sorry about the camera angle. I've literally just got my phone propped up on its case. Again, bit of an impromptu video, but I just kind of suddenly decided, you know what, let's actually make this. So, yeah.